Chapter 682, Parting. Could he actually be stronger than young Miss? The old woman said, Even if he was stronger, he can't compare to you. No one can in the current younger generation. Not necessarily. The girl answered, At least, until now, I still don't know the limit of his power, so I can't make any conclusions. In my eyes, Li Kai himself is shrouded in a mist and is completely unfathomable. Not even I can see through him. How does he compare to Yi King Cheng of the Stony Edge Kingdom? The old woman had to ask, Compare to Yi King Cheng? The girl in the carriage paused for a bit before answering, I can't say in detail since I have no way of knowing just how strong Li Kai is. However, my intuition is telling me that Li Kai can only be stronger than Yi King Cheng. That can't be. The old woman's expression visibly changed as she said, The Stony Edge Kingdom spared nothing when it came to Yi King Cheng. He is a supreme celestial being who is adored by the heavens. In the stone medicine world, outside of young Miss, only the girl from the Jian clan can compete with him. How could this nobody Li Kai compare to Yi King Cheng? Yi King Cheng was quite renowned in the stone medicine world and was considered the number one man at least among the younger generation. Countless geniuses in this world were dim before his presence. Others simply did not dare to compare themselves to him, and many of them were willing to work under his banner. I'm afraid so. The girl in the carriage continued, Yi King Chang's power can be estimated and measured. Thus it is possible to compare. However, this Li Kai is unfathomable. I simply can't gauge just how strong he is. Despite not being able to calculate his true strength, my intuition is telling me that he can only be stronger than Yi King Chang. The old woman couldn't help but contemplate in silence for a moment after hearing the girl's answer. She knew her young Mrs. abilities very well and had full confidence in her. The girl in the carriage said, Let us go. He found us. Even if he makes it here, we aren't afraid of him. The old woman's momentum peaked. At this moment, she no longer resembled an old carriage driver on the verge of death. The aura her body emitted was extremely frightening. No, Grandma. We don't need to fight him. The girl in the carriage said, Even though we are not afraid of anyone, we stand to gain nothing from fighting with Lee Kai. Before he makes it here, we should leave first. The old woman didn't say anything else as she sat up straight and controlled the carriage to leave. With the sound of the wheels turning, the carriage traveled very far before disappearing over the horizon without leaving any traces behind. Li Kai ran back to the Celestial Peak River and found that there were no cultivators here. Only Yuan Cake was there, waiting. She saw him getting down from the carriage and was a little surprised. However, she didn't ask any questions and only revealed a calm smile, saying, Did Brother Li get any immortal sulfur? What about you? Li Kai didn't answer and only smiled back. Yuan Kei nodded her head and replied, I obtained two pieces of very old immortal sulfur. This will be enough to use for one batch. Nothing can be better. Let us go. Li Kai smiled and gently nodded. Yuan Kei can help but take a look around before saying, I don't know where Tai Yi had run off to. Are we not waiting for him? He doesn't need us waiting for him. Li Kai shook his head and said, If he really wants to leave with us, then he would have shown himself already. I'm afraid he does not wish to go with us. He must have gone ahead already. Yuan Kei was a clever person, so she thought about it for a second before revealing a faint and natural smile. She didn't say anything else and sat inside Li Kai's carriage. With a creaking sound, the Imperial Draco Bull pulled the carriage far away. Not too fast. Not too slow. Li Kai sat inside with his eyes closed. He didn't make any conversation. Yuan Kei seemed to be enjoying this silence as well since she didn't say anything either. Although the bull was going neither fast nor slow, they quickly left the Celestial Peak Mountain. The moment they left the area, Li Kai immediately opened his eyes and asked with a light smile while looking at Yuan Kei, Do you have to go back to the Serene Garden? She gently nodded her head and said, Yes, I plan to go into isolated cultivation after I return since I need to refine a batch of medicines that will take some time. Where does Brother Li want to go? Maybe if you have time. You can come visit my serene garden? There was an indescribable sense of closeness that she felt towards Li Kai. Although they only became acquainted recently, in her heart, it felt like they had known each other for a very long time, like old friends. I'm afraid I can't go to your serene garden right now since I have to take a trip to the Alpine Mountain. Li Kai smiled and said, After the Alpine Mountain, I have to go to the Alchemy Conference of the Alchemy Kingdom as well. Ah, uh, are you going there to celebrate Alpine Tree Father's birthday? Yuan Kei asked, Yes, I have made plans to meet with someone at the Alpine Mountain. If it wasn't for this previous arranged, I would have really liked to come take a look at your serene garden since it is famed for its unrivaled plant and medicine cultivation. Li Kai answered. His words were not flattery since this was indeed the truth. Many spirit medicines grew inside the serene garden that would cause people to salivate. Countless great characters had wanted to take a look but couldn't. It still wouldn't be too late to visit later. Yuan Kei revealed a calming smile and said, The Alpine Mountain is definitely worth a trip. It is protected by the Alpine Tree Father and also contains great spirit medicines everywhere. It is quite famous for having a lot of great plants. Li Kai couldn't help but smile while looking at Yuan Kei. He gently brushed the hair on her shoulders back. It seemed that they had an indescribable harmony. We'll meet again later. Eventually, he smiled and bid his farewell. Yuan Kei left the carriage and waved at him as they went their separate ways. Afterward, Li Kai sat in the carriage once again with his eyes closed. He commanded the bull, to the Alpine Mountain. There was no need for Li Kai to drive since the bull could pull the carriage toward the Alpine Mountain. The Alpine Mountain was a very general indicator. Some said that the mountain was the location where the Alpine Forefather was born and grew up. Some said that the Alpine Mountain was referring to the Alpine Mountain's vein. In fact, the truth was not far off from this. The mountain range and the entire vein were all territories that belonged to the Tree Father, 
Although the Tree Father didn't establish a sect at this location, his followers and disciples were just as strong as any great power. The Alpine Mountain was also called the Alpine Grand Vein, one of the eight great veins in the stone medicine world. It was on the same level as the elegant Azure Grand Vein. It stretched far across the alchemy realm like a sleeping dragon. It was grand and magnificent with incredible peaks and mountains everywhere. There were many spirit deers walking around, golden birds flying above, and flood dragons below the marshes. Meanwhile, spirit medicines were in abundance here. As one of the eight grand veins, plenty of spirit energy had accumulated from millions of miles. The energy was as vast as an ocean. Moreover, under the protection of the Alpine Tree Father, the plants here were able to thrive and flourish. Thus this land was famous for having a lot of plants. Of course, one had to talk about the Tree Father when the topic of the Alpine Mountain was ever brought up in this world. The giant bamboo tree and the Alpine Tree Father were referred to as the two great demon forefathers. Although the Alpine Tree Father was much younger than the ancient giant bamboo tree, his fame was much more widespread. In fact, this was quite understandable because, for millions of years now, the giant bamboo tree had never taken shape. It had always silently stood there, so the world had forgotten about its existence or had just gotten used to it. The Alpine Tree Father was completely different. He had gained intelligence from the Tao and also passed down his Tao heritage. This caused his reputation to spread along with countless students. For several hundred thousand years now, living beings that were born at this location had heard the Tree Father preach the Tao many times. Some of them were demon monarchs. Of course, the beasts and vegetation that had yet to reach the Tao listened as well. During this period, many Ulams traveled for countless miles just to beseech the Tree Father for a chance to listen to him preach the Tao. Because of this, although the Tree Father had not left the Alpine Mountains territory for a very long time now, he had students everywhere in the world, across the three grand realms. Moreover, some of his students even became virtuous paragons. Thus, it was easy to imagine the Tree Father's great influence. As for his cultivation, no outsiders were privy to this. Some said that the Tree Father could be bestowed the God King title. Some also said that outside of immortal emperors, no one else could compete with the Tree Father, regardless of how great his cultivation was. As a demon forefather that had lived for 500,000 years, this was more than enough to earn everyone's respect. Therefore, in the entire stone medicine world, numerous great powers and imperial lineages and even a monster like the Alchemy Kingdom were very respectful to the Alpine Tree Father. His 500,000th birthday was a huge event for the entire stone medicine world. All the great powers and imperial lineages, as well as renowned cultivators from all over the place, quickly traveled great lengths to give him their best wishes. Even those from far away places like the Beast Realm and the Stone Realm began their departure early in order to make it on time for the celebration. Some had even left as early as one year ago. His great birthday celebration caused the entire territory that spanned for millions of miles to become rowdy since many lineages were on their way. In just a moment, the normally quiet Alpine Mountain became very busy and was overcrowded with newly arriving guests. The usually deserted valleys now contained many guests from far away. 